Hallelujah. May the grace and peace of the Lord be with you all who worship with us today. Do you know BTS? BTS is my daughter's favorite K-pop musician. As soon as BTS released uh, it's a new song, Dynamite, a month ago, it topped the Billboard Hot 100. It became a big deal in South Korea because it was the first Korean singer to win first place for two weeks. Do you know what BTS means? Do you know? Do you know how many members there are in the group? Do you know each member's name? What other BTS hit songs are there? I don't know. I don't know. But if you are a BTS fan, you probably know about what I am talking about. However, knowing about BTS is not the same as knowing BTS who they are. In other words, it just means that you have information about BTS and it doesn't mean that you have had a meal with the meal with them and uh, actually know them person to person. For the past six weeks, I have preached about the Holy Spirit. I wonder how much you understood about the Holy Spirit and how much you learned about the Holy Spirit. But what's more important is not knowing about the Holy Spirit, but knowing the Holy Spirit, who He is. In other words, we should not know the Holy Spirit with intelligence, but me, the Holy Spirit, personally. Because the Holy Spirit is a person Holy Spirit is a divine person. He has a soul. What is the soul? Do you remember? Mind, will, and emotion. Yes, Holy Spirit is a person we have to fellowship with Him every day. Amen? We have to fellowship with the Holy Spirit and live according to his guidance. This is a life being filled with the Holy Spirit. But when we live a life full of the Holy Spirit, we can know God's will for each of us and live in this world according to God's will. Receiving the Holy Spirit is not an option, but a necessity. How can we receive the Holy Spirit? How can we live a life full of the Holy Spirit? How on earth should we live in this world? I pray in the name of the Lord that it will be time to look back on your life through today's message and get answers about what kind of life you should live with the Holy Spirit in your future. Amen? In today's text, Apostle Paul meets some disciples in Ephesus. These are the people who accepted the gospel from Apollos. You can see what kind of person Apollo was in chapter 18. Let's read together Acts chapter 18, verse 24 and 25. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man 
with the true knowledge of the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with great fervor and thought about Jesus accurately, though he knew only the baptism of John. Apollos is an eloquent speaker and a Jewish Christian who well knows the law in the Old Testament. Apollos knew about Jesus and told, proclaimed, and, and preached others about him, but he was limited. He was limited. He knew only the baptism of John. He learned the way of the Lord, but did not know about the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised when he ascended to heaven. In other words, Apollos had excellent knowledge of the Bible, uh, actually the Old Testament, but did not have complete knowledge of the gospel of Christ. Acts 18 verse 26 says, He began to speak boldly in the synagogue when Priscilla and Aquila heard him. They invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more adequately. Just in time, Priscilla and Aquila who are the fellow worker of the Apostle Paul, they heard, heard Apollos preaching about Jesus in the synagogue. Priscilla and Aquila are the people who received the Holy Spirit. They are spiritually born again. They are spiritually born again. As they listened to Apollo's sermon, they quickly discovered something wrong in that sermon. Apollo's sermon was not based on the Holy Spirit, but merely on limited knowledge. So, Christians and, and Aquila invited Apollo to their home. There, they gave him a better understanding of the way of God. What is the way of God? That Priscilla and Aquila explained to Apollo. It is about the plan of God's salvation. It must have been about why God sent Jesus Christ to this earth why Jesus died on, the, died on the cross and resurrected and what the Holy Spirit Jesus promised when he ascended to heaven was. Because these are about Jesus after John the Baptist. But these disciples, Paul met in the text, were those who did not yet know the way of God. The way of God. But Apostle Paul was in a more serious state than these disciples. What kind of person was Paul before he repented? Do you know? He was the one who called the Christians and locked them in prison and persecuted them. Although Apostle Paul lived the life of preaching the gospel after repentance and uh, receiving the Holy Spirit, his life was never smooth sailing. If he did not meet Jesus and did not receive the Holy Spirit, he might have lived as a respected religious leader of Judaism and uh, wealthy Roman citizen. However, Apostle Paul preached the gospel and was eventually martyred. 
These disciples at, at the time must have had many difficulties because they know about Jesus. They believe in Jesus. Nevertheless, they accepted the message of Apostle Paul. Why they did that? They have already received the baptism of John. But what did John, the Baptist, testify about Jesus Christ? Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 says, I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sanders I am not worthy of carrying. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. John the Baptist testified that Jesus will baptize you, baptize you with the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit and fire. They must have been looking forward to meeting Jesus, who will baptize them with the Holy Spirit and fire. Finally, these disciples, they met Apostle Paul, who will deliver Jesus Christ. What would you do if you were these disciples? Of course, you have to respond to Paul's message. You have to accept, accept the true gospel. To the scripture verse 4 to 6 says, Paul said John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophecy. They realized, they realized their wrong ways through the past form. They were baptized of water and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they were given tongue and prophecies the gift of the Holy Spirit as proof of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. They learned about Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who would come through John the Baptist. And through Apostle Paul, they came to believe in the true gospel. Now they have met the Holy Spirit. Through sermons and Bible study, we learned and heard and a lot of Jesus Christ. There are many people outside the church who know about Jesus Christ. But, but they don't come to church because they don't believe in Jesus as their Savior. They don't come to worship because they are not able to believe the Savior in Jesus, who is the Son of God. But those who meet Jesus believe that Jesus is the Savior, they are sure of Him. If you are sure that He is your Savior, you must now meet the Holy Spirit like these disciples. Now is the time to meet the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, it is God's great blessing and grace that we believe in Jesus as your Savior, my Savior. 
But the fact that we believe in Jesus Christ and receive the Holy Spirit does not guarantee a smooth life in this land. Our faith does not guarantee success in this world. You can live well in this world without believing in Jesus, without receiving the Holy Spirit, or without acknowledging God. The Bible does not tell us about the lives of these disciples after they receive the Holy Spirit. But we know how the kind of lives of people who receive the Holy Spirit have. So, were their lives smooth and peaceful? I don't think. I don't think their lives would have been smooth and peaceful. Given the circumstances of the time, we can figure out through the Bible and the lives of the people who received the Holy Spirit. They must have already been in trouble for following the way of the Lord, learned by John the Baptist. Nevertheless, they were willing to accept the message of the Apostle Paul and receive the Holy Spirit. These disciples did not stay in knowing Jesus. Through the message of Paul, the Apostle Paul, they heard the real gospel and met Jesus Christ, who, the, who is the Son of God and who is the Savior. Because they met Jesus, it is only natural to receive the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised. How about you now? How about you? Don't be satisfied with your current state. You should not stay in that state. I emphasize again strongly now it's time to meet the Holy Spirit. It's time to baptize in the Holy Spirit, just like these disciples. The spiritual structure of mankind created in the image of God is the same as God. I told you about this before. These humans were created by the Word of God. It means that you and I are spiritual beings created by the Word of God. Therefore, of course, we have to know the Word of God. The Bible says that the Word has become flesh. John 1 verse 14 says, The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word is Jesus Christ. The Word is Jesus Christ. Amen? We must receive Jesus Christ, the Word, and receive the Holy Spirit, Spirit of God. Because the Holy Spirit fulfills the Word. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot fulfill the Lord's will in this land. But in order for the Holy Spirit to fulfill the Lord's will on this land, He needs you and me, the children who are created by the Word of God. Amen? Holy Spirit needs you. Needs you. Because we are created by the Word of God. Our spiritual structure is the same as God. We are spiritual beings. 
Listen, Father God created the world. Word with his word. When he spoke, he created the world. And many miracles occurred when Jesus spoke. The work of the Holy Spirit began when the Lord spoke. We are children of God. Then, of course, we must spoke, proclaim the word of God. When we try to live in this world as God's children, there is something in the way of it. The temptation, temptation of Satan. And one more thing is your ego. You may say that you believe in Jesus, but please, please look back on yourself really seriously. The children of God must do God's work according to God's will, His will. But what about you now? Isn't your desire still stronger? Is your priority not the Lord, but yourself? If you want to live in this world as your desire, why do you come to church? Why do you join the service? Why do you believe in Jesus? God has given away all his things. Why are you hesitant to give your little things to God? If your life and state of mind are like this, then surrender. Surrender to the Lord. Do not leave the world only with your thought and your own strength. Do not put off meeting the Lord and receiving the Holy Spirit any longer. To do so, please, please come to the place of worship. Place of worship. Pastor Gates, I can't go to church because of the COVID-19. I'm going out when this is over. Pastor Gates, oh, I'm busy, so I cannot. Yeah, later, maybe I will join the church. Is that really why? I'm so sad. Holy Spirit, so sad. Are you worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth through online worship? Check the condition of your faith. Verse 7 says, There were about 12 men in all. About 12 people who received the Holy Spirit would have now become true disciples of the Lord and live the life of a witness to Jesus Christ. Uh, we we decided to get together on Friday evening once a month from from this month and have a worship and, and fellowship together. So we got together on the 18th and we decided to have a second meeting on Friday, October 16th. Do you remember? I said to brothers and sisters who were joined at the last meeting, uh, like meeting, like this. I said like this. This meeting and this, this worship are not open to everyone. Twelve is enough. Do you remember? The Friday morning, uh, not morning, Friday evening service, the meeting, the purpose of this 
meeting and service is to help you grow in faith and receive the Holy Spirit so that you can become the Lord's disciples and be used by God. Do you remember? I told you that you have to choose one or two people to share about our meeting. Please go and share your feeling or thought or message with them what you have received through our Friday meeting and service. Dear brothers and sisters, what do you think is a sermon? Why do you have to worship and listen to the sermon through this video clip? The sermon is what God says to his children gathered here at this time through the preacher, pastor, who received the message by the touch of the Holy Spirit. Through today's sermon, God is telling you, God is telling you to receive the Holy Spirit. Answer this as Amen and take, take it as yours. This series ends today. I didn't tell you everything about the Holy Spirit, but that's all right. That's all right. If you receive the Holy Spirit, you can get to know the Holy Spirit by fellowshipping with Him every day. Haven't you received the Holy Spirit yet? That's okay. That's okay. You have a chance. You have a chance. Now you know about the Holy Spirit, right? Last six weeks, you don't remember, please, watch again. Now you know about the Holy Spirit. Let's open your heart to the Holy Spirit and recognize and welcome the Holy Spirit. When you seek His presence in love with the Holy Spirit, He will surely answer your prayer. And let us all receive the Holy Spirit, fellowship with the Holy Spirit, and live a life full of the Holy Spirit. Let us give all of ourselves to the Holy Spirit so that He may accomplish the work of God through you and me. Dear brothers and sisters, knowledge of the Bible does not make you a disciple of Jesus. Knowing a lot of information about Jesus Christ does not make you a witness of Jesus Christ. He who preaches the gospel is not a man who knows the word. Knows the word. But a man who believes. The Bible is the word of God. The word is Jesus Christ. We created by the word of God. Knowing, yeah, we need knowing about the Word of God, about Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, but more importantly is believe me. Yeah. We must experience the Word of God who lives and works in our lives. To do so, we must receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, it's time to receive the Holy Spirit. Let us all be filled with the Holy Spirit. I bless and pray 
in the name of Jesus Christ that you will be used by God to be a child of God who makes him happy and joyful. Amen.